Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nauli. In this second video of about types of reaction, I'm going to be talking specifically about acid-base reaction and some of the concepts related to acid-base reaction. First off, acid-base reaction is also called neutralization reaction. And the reason is because here's the general form of an acid-base reaction. You have an acid reacting with a base, producing a salt and water. And water is generally considered a neutral uh, compound in terms of its uh, pH, which is not a concept we'll discuss in this class, but you'll discuss it in Chem 12. But because water is neutral, then this reaction is often called neutralization reaction. Uh, the, the salt here is really just a general term that's used to denote the ionic compound that's produced in this reaction. So first off, in order to know whether you have an acid-base reaction or not, you need to be able to recognize acids and bases. Uh, here's a definition for an acid. It's just a substance that will produce H plus in water. Okay or the H plus ion is also often called proton. So a substance that can produce that ion in water when it's dissolved in water is called an acid, whereas a base is a substance that can produce OH minus in water. <clears throat> if you want to know what some common acids and bases are, well, uh, you should really look back a couple of videos ago when I talked about electrolytes, strong and weak electrolytes, and in a table that I provided in that video, there was a list of weak acids and strong acids and weak bases and strong bases. And those are some of the examples of acids and bases that you should uh, be familiar with. Okay, so here's an example reaction of an acid-base reaction. So you notice here we have H2SO4, which of course, um, in the aqueous state, when you call it, um, uh, when you go through the nomenclature rule, this is called sulfuric acid, so immediately you know it's an acid. But generally, the fact that you have uh, a proton at the beginning written like this, H something in the formula, and then there's aqueous, generally indicates that it's an acid, okay? But the name also indicates that it's an acid. And then you have here sodium hydroxide, and you notice there's an hydroxide ion here. So when I dissolve this in water, it's going to break apart into sodium and hydroxide, so it produces hydroxide in water. So that's a base. When you have this reaction, it's basically just a double replacement reaction. So that's what I said in the previous video. It's a double replacement reaction. So what happens is then you take this ion and you swap it with that ion, the cations, right? So you take this, and when you partner the sodium with the sulfate, you get sodium sulfate. That's what we call the salt. Okay, it's just an ionic compound. You notice the other product is H and OH combined together, and that's just water. And then the two here is just to balance it. So then at the end, you get a balanced equation that looks like this. But you notice that this is exactly what I showed up here. You have an acid base, you get a salt and water as a product. I want to ask a little bit about what is the net ionic equation in this particular reaction, okay? I'm going to go to the next slide to kind of work this out. Okay, so our reaction is H2SO4 aqueous plus um, sodium hydroxide aqueous. And we produce sodium sulfate aqueous and water liquid. Okay, and we balance it, we get two here and two here. Now if you want to write net ionic equation, what you do is then you uh, notice all the aqueous species can then be split apart into its ions. So I have 2H plus aqueous, right, plus SO4, 2 minus aqueous, plus 2 and A plus aqueous, plus 2 OH minus aqueous. So notice that this is 2 and AOH, so they split into 2 NA and 2 OH. And then I have 2 Na plus from the sodium sulfate, I have the sulfate, and then I have water. Because water as a liquid doesn't split apart, it stays together as that liquid compound, okay? So then you can cancel out the, pro the spectator ions, SO4, sodium, and you're left with just 2H plus, 
plus 2OH minus going to H2O liquid, uh, 2H2O I should say. And then we can simplify this as H plus plus OH minus aqueous going to water liquid. So you notice that the net ionic equation is really just the proton H plus which comes from the acid and then the OH minus the base um, which comes uh, you know the OH minus hydroxide which comes from the base forming just water okay so that's really all acid base reaction the net ionic equation will simplify to this um, some acid plus some base uh, go to water you see in a, in a subset of a acid base reaction where you produce gases you might see some gases here as well but you always see water and you always see the acid base um, in the net ionic equation okay so there's a, a few additional terms uh, concepts you need to know about acid base reaction uh, first one is just uh, some of the names that we might refer uh, to acids so when we say monoprotic acids we mean that those are acids that uh, produce only one proton so things for example like HCl okay or H um, NO3 okay those are uh, acids that produces only one proton when dissociated in water so we call them uh, monoprotic acid diprotic acid would be something that produces two protons so for example you can have uh, sulfuric acid earlier the one that we use in the previous example okay um, and then of course we also have acids that produce three proton for example um, H3PO4 there will be one example of it. Uh, so when you see these names, you should kind of recognize them as what they are. Now, another uh, concept related to acid-base reaction is it turns out that some acid-base reaction produce compounds that are unstable on their own, so they don't stay uh, together. The, c c the parts of these compounds don't stay together, but usually one of them, they would break apart, and one of the uh, products of the compound is... Uh, a gas so when you have acid base reaction that have this type of property those are called gas evolution reactions <clears throat> so what are some examples of these there's not that many and you can just really memorize these uh, as the compounds that would uh, generate those gases so uh, for example here you have h2co3 that compound when it's formed doesn't really stay together as uh, h2co3 but it would break apart into H2O and CO2. Uh, whereas if you have something like uh, H2SO3, again, another compound that doesn't stay, doesn't stay together is H2SO3, but it would break apart into H2O and CO2. Uh, ammonium hydroxide is another one that would tend to break apart into ammonia and um, H2O, okay? And ammonia here is a gas. So these are three that you want to remember because every time you produce one of these products they would basically just break apart so instead of writing this as your uh, product you would write it as H2O and CO2 okay uh, another compound that uh, is often produced in acid-base reaction is the H2S hydrogen sulfide now this actually is produced as a gas so again it's um, might not be you know you might think it's aqueous but it's actually a gas so another thing you need to remember so for example in this reaction K2S plus 2HCl, we swap the cations, we get H2S and then KCl, right, in a double displacement reaction, and the H2S would then be the gas form. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about a concept related to acid-base, which is acid-base titration, um, and then do some calculation with that.